This lecture on pit inductus arteriosus was brought to you by USMLE Clinic. The incidence of ductal patency is inversely related to gestational age. That is, the more premature the newborn, the greater the risk of pit inductus arteriosus. There are many other important associations as well, including low birth weight, sepsis, congenital rubella, and birth at higher altitudes. Conversely, antenatal corticosteroid exposure actually decreases the risk of ductal patency. Spontaneous closure occurs in a large proportion of premature babies. Keep in mind that functional closure of the ductus arteriosus usually occurs by the fourth postnatal day, while anatomic closure usually occurs within the first few weeks of life. In term in older children, however, spontaneous closure of the duct usually does not occur. Manifestation of disease depends on the age of the patient and the degree of shunting. Full-term infants with a small duct may not develop any symptoms, whereas large ducts can result in pulmonary overcirculation and heart failure, typically beginning a few weeks following birth as the pulmonary vascular resistance drops. Parents may note irritability, diaphoresis, difficulty feeding, poor weight gain, and recurrent respiratory infections, amongst other symptoms. In adult patients, a large uncorrected duct can result in severe pulmonary vascular injury and Eisminger syndrome. Large defects may manifest with a wide pulse pressure and a bounding pulse that is palpable in unusual locations, such as the palms of the hands. Now the most characteristic finding on physical examination is a continuous machinery-like murmur at the upper left sternal border with or without a palpable thrill. In newborns, however, the murmur is usually confined to systole, irrespective of the size of the ductus, because aortic pressure is not greater than pulmonary pressure during diastole. Echocardiography is the preferred test for establishing the diagnosis. It will allow for measurement of the size of the defect and the degree of shunting. As well, it can help rule out other coexisting congenital heart defects. ECG and chest x-ray may provide additional information, albeit with lower sensitivity and specificity than echocardiography. With small defects, however, both may be completely normal. Patients with pain inductus arteriosus are at increased risk for several complications, including bronchopulmonary dysplasia, necrotized enterocolitis, and death. Unfortunately, ductal closure results in similar rates of morbidity and mortality as conservative therapy alone. Pharmacologic closure of the duct lacks efficacy in term infants and older patients. This subgroup is usually treated with transcatheter occlusion or surgical ligation in cases that are not amenable to a percutaneous approach. 